What up, everybody? Power Book 2 Ghost concludes with the perfect ending, in my personal opinion. Whether or not this is the actual ending or not, it was definitely the ending of this chapter because things will be different moving forward. But this chapter of Power, titled Ghost, ends with Tariq fulfilling the like father, like son narrative by becoming the new ghost, taking Noma's place, and Chinadu stated that Tariq will be like a ghost. Something that comes all the way full circle from the ending of season one when Tariq told Tommy about being worthy of his father's name. Then at the end of season three after Tariq lost his trust fund and could no longer rely on the inheritance that his father left him and he knew that he would have to get it on his own. He told Tasha that he just needs that money and that power, the things that Noma has. Tasha warned Tariq that that was the same mistake that his father made. And at that point, Tariq said he would be better than Ghost because he was going to learn from his father's mistakes. Something that Tariq said again to Anya when they were in the car together this episode, that they could learn from their parents' mistakes. And this is definitely something that Tariq plans on doing moving forward. The two mistakes that Ghost made that Tariq has learned not to repeat is not letting emotions get in the way of business and not having any attachments. When Tariq told Chinadu that he won't let emotions get in the way of business, I think this is what gained Chinadu's respect and one of the key selling points. Because that was what Noma's downfall was. If she would have listened to Chinadu from the beginning, both her and Anya would be alive. Chinadu told Noma not to worry about Anya, that they needed to get Noma to safety. If Noma would have listened, Anya would have been at her apartment out of harm's way and Noma would have been safe in Legos. But because Noma let emotions get in the way of business, both her and her daughter are now dead. As far as not letting emotions get in the way of business, Tariq demonstrated this from the jump, setting the chain of command with Brayden and Effie. Effie had no problem with it and said cool. But when he told Brayden that he would be working for him moving forward, Brayden tried to peel into Tariq's emotions, telling him he was trying to build something with his brother. But Tariq didn't go for it and Brayden fell in line. This could have been something planted in Tariq's head by Detective Carter because Carter asked Tariq how he gets Brayden and Effie to do whatever he says. At this point Tariq might have realized that he has more power than he thought. This is a move that Ghost was never able to make with Tommy. Ghost and Tommy were partners 50-50 with everything. So when Ghost tried breaking free from the life it was harder because Tommy was holding him back. So we'll see how the solo act in being the boss works out for Tariq in comparison to Ghost. As far as attachments, Tariq got his family out of Witsec and send them up in a new city to live where Tasha doesn't have to work and Yaz can go to a good school. Tariq also told Tasha that as long as he's in the game, he won't be starting a family of his own either. Other than Tommy, Ghost's family was his biggest weakness. Like Milan told Ghost, he was a man of many attachments. Tariq has learned from this and he will be a man of few attachments as long as he's in the game. So his hallucination in episode 5 ended up being a warning and not foreshadowing his life with a family. Getting me to Tariq's new organization, what he called The Machine. And Tariq is the ghost in The Machine. It will be interesting when Tommy gets word of a mystery person who runs the New York drug game that goes by Ghost. Tariq put Effie back in charge of running the Ivy Leagues and the Course Perfect app at Stansfield. Effie's forced to stay in the game instead of transferring to Stanford because she gave her 100 bands that she saved for two semesters at Stanford to Kane so he could go on the run and set up somewhere. Kane promised that he would pay Effie back on his way out of town, so this lets us know that we haven't heard the last of Kane Tejada. I definitely think there could be a Kane spinoff around the corner with him setting up shop in a new city. Brayden will now be taking over the fight clubs that Zion ran and that Drew was running for a little while. So Brayden still has a pretty decent position in the game. Like Tariq said, Brayden and Effie are both good at what they do, but there can only be one boss. Tariq also told Brayden that he needed to find a new group to set up shows for so they can get back to moving weight that way also. The No Lies group is done and it looks like Brayden and Elle are done for good. As far as Brayden and Tariq have to worry about Steve coming back on them, or Salim, or any other body for that matter, the next part of Tariq's organization will take care of all those bodies. 
and that is Detective Nico Calder. Definitely something that Ghost never had on his side, a major NYPD task force covering for him. One thing about Nico, though, is that he followed Carter's rule, no innocence better than Carter, and that's ultimately why he betrayed Carter and arrested him. But one big problem that could come back to haunt Tariq is that they left Carter breathing. And Carter warned Tariq that this ain't over. Like Kane asked Drew why Carter was still breathing. So we definitely might not have heard the last from Detective Carter. Another part of Tariq's organization is Davis McLean who got his law license restored by convincing Jenny Sullivan and Blanca Rodriguez to drop the complaints against him because they were going to hand over evidence that Noma was the queen pin and the Dejadas would agree to testify. Tariq said Davis would be responsible for handling the money and keeping it legit. Again, something that Ghost never had. He had Proctor to help him cover his tracks with some stuff, but Ghost and Tommy relied on Tasha to make the money legit. Getting me to the end of the Tejada family as we know it. The Tejadas avenged the death of their mother by killing Noma, but now Kane has to go on the run after killing Noma in front of the cops and shooting out with the cops before fleeing the scene. I think Kane had Effie waiting to pick him up somewhere because he was next seen at a cheap hotel with Effie giving him the money after a doctor bandaged up his gunshot wound. We don't know where Kane's headed, but like I said earlier in the video, I don't think we've seen the last of him, and I wouldn't be surprised if there was a Kane spinoff. As for Drew, he's finally getting out the game and moving to Paris to do his art, leaving Diana alone as the last to hottest standing in New York. And she told Drew that she wanted to rebuild their family's drug empire. Just like Tariq became his father, the new version of Ghost, Diana also became the new Monet. Diana is now heartless like Monet after losing her mother and her baby. But at the end of the episode, when Drew told Diana he was leaving, Diana walked straight to Monet's chair at the end of the table and stood over it. Early in the episode before this, she went back to her regular seat at the table to talk to her brothers twice. It wasn't until she was the last one standing when she went and stood at Monet's chair. Then at the end of the episode in the credits... Tariq got a mystery phone call, someone who got into some kind of beef, and Tariq agreed to help this person out. A couple things about this scene is that I definitely think there was a time jump between the end of the episode when Tariq met up with Chinadu and when he got this phone call. Because Tariq told this person that he hadn't heard from them in a minute. Something else key to who this person is, he told them that they were family for life. So this could only be a couple of people most likely either Brayden or Tommy, possibly even Diana. I think it could be Brayden, either though Brayden still works for Tariq, that doesn't mean that they're still hanging out and seeing each other on a regular basis either. Tariq is basically hands off with this organization, so he's not necessarily talking to his workers on a daily basis. That could even mean Brayden. But I definitely think that this phone call in the credits it's going to be the move that Tariq makes to start the next spinoff. And there you have it. Leave your thoughts, theories, and predictions in the comments.